Weather, a tropical feel here in Chicago. We're in a severe thunderstorm. Watch that elevated risk for much of the Great Lakes down into uh, the Mid-South. We're going to be not only tracking what's happening now, but through the day and showing you the latest pictures from the tornadoes uh, in the last 24 hours. I'll track that, but coming up on GMA, of course, we have to get to the reaction after former President Trump surrendered to authorities in New York City, delivering a defiant speech once he got back to Florida. We're going to have the latest on those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Easter preparations begin tomorrow in San Antonio. City officials announcing that's the day curfew at select parks will be lifted for overnight camping. Here's a list of just some of the parks where overnight camping will be happening. Curfew will be lifted tomorrow at 11 and resume Easter Sunday at 11 p.m. Parks on the list include Brackenridge, McAllister, MLK, Roosevelt, Southside Lions, just to name a few. For more details and address locations, head over to ksat.com. Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, do you feel like your doctor is gaslighting you when you step into a doctor's office? We'll explain what it means and how it's impacting people around the world. And church bells are keeping one Northwest Side resident wide awake. We'll tell you what's being done about the noise coming from one home that was turned into a church. And checking Transkai, still keeping an eye on problems on the upper level there. Those flyovers at 410 and Crossroads. We do have some rain in the area, so factor that into your morning commute. We're now hearing from the police officers from the Nashville school shooting and what was going through their minds during those chilling moments. Gunfire and fights broke out earlier this morning, leading to a heavy police presence. What we're learning now at 6. And let's look out there with live cam. We are expecting rain, but for now, it's humid at 74 degrees. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday, April 5th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. And if you got tired of the heat, well, we have some good news for you. We do. We have some rain in the area and then maybe quite a bit more headed our way as we wrap up the week. Justin Horn is in for Mike. Hey, good morning, guys. Cold front is uh, nearing San Antonio. It's got a broken line of showers and storms along that boundary. So that'll be moving in the next couple of hours. And then, as you mentioned, some cooler weather today and some good rain chances showing up tomorrow. So here's the live radar right now. We do have a broken line of showers and storms, some lightning strikes, especially out near Lakey and this line is working south and east and should push into San Antonio. I'd say around seven or eight o'clock. So we have to prepare for that this morning. It's a small window for rain, but it is there. We'll watch for a couple strong storms along that line right now, pushing through Fredericksburg, Kerrville and Lakey, as I said, and even a few showers out ahead of it moving through San Antonio at this hour. Right now we've got cloudy skies and temperatures sitting at 74. A little bit of rain actually being reported at the airport with a dew point of 70 and a good southeasterly wind at 13 miles per hour. KSAT 12 hour forecast, 30% chance of rain here over the next couple of hours as that broken line moves through and the rain chances quickly fall off and we'll see those cooler temperatures today, but also some gusty winds. We could see gusts up to 35 miles per hour out of the northeast. So we'll have to prepare for that as well. This afternoon, partly cloudy, highs in the upper 70s. Of course, things change again tomorrow. Good change, chances of rain move in. Some pockets of heavy rain potentially Thursday and Friday. We'll talk all about that coming up here in just a few minutes. But we've got to check in with Stephen now. Some wet roads starting to show up. Any issues? Yeah, I've not seen major issues reported as of yet, Justin. But we've been keeping our eye on a few things here in the traffic lab. First here at 410 at Crossroads, we have uh, those flashing lights out there along with the stalled via bus. This has been around there for quite a while now, probably about an hour and you can see that uh, not a lot of progress has been made. We still have that bus out there and of course now two Texas hero trucks working to clear this scene up. So let's hope everyone's doing OK, but thankfully it's not causing any major delays for drivers. So just be on the lookout for that as the commute does get rolling here. Giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area. It's quiet for now, but things are expected to change as more folks get the day started and head out on the roadways. So just be careful as you uh, get your day rolling here. But if you plan on heading into San Antonio from any of these communities. Thankfully, no major delays. 28 minutes, still pretty pleasant along 37 northbound from Pleasanton. Highway 90, I would say, is a perfect time to take out, uh, get on the roadways about 30 minutes along US 90 eastbound, heading in from Castroville, and around uh, 16 minutes that arrival from Lytle on I 35 northbound. So things again uh, quiet here, but we are continuing to track this area at 410 at Crossroads. Uh, let's hope we'll have a better update in the next few minutes, but we still have plenty of construction to talk about, and we'll be tracking these roads closely throughout the morning. Mark Steph. Thank you. A call then a brawl had police out in force overnight on the north side of town. Hollywood Park police had to call for backup after a traffic stop turned into a fight.
Katrina Weber is live where it ended near Highway 281 just north of Bitters Road. And Katrina, we understand officers ended up taking several people into custody. That's right, as many as five people may be facing charges after what happened here overnight. Now, police took those people into custody and it was clear that they did not go willingly. The suspects appeared to be fighting with each other as well as officers. Hollywood Park Police had to call for backup and officers with San Antonio, Hill Country Village and the Bear County Sheriff's Office all answered that call. Police say this started before one this morning, originally with a call about people in separate cars shooting at each other. The Hollywood Park officers say they stopped one of those cars on the Highway 281 access road, but that quickly led to what looked like a brawl in this parking lot, which you just saw. And this ended with several people in custody. We don't know yet which of those people will face charges or what charges they will face. And it does not appear that anyone was injured either in the exchange of gunfire or the fight that happened here. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A one-year-old child is critically hurt after being hit by a vehicle. This accident happened yesterday outside of a store on South Flores. Police say the child was hit after getting out of the car. Now the driver who hit the child stopped to help, so that person is not being charged. It's growing problem in San Antonio, and the Bear County Sheriff's Office is taking note. We're talking about the increase in violence associated with the distribution of THC vape pens. And in some cases, Bear County officials report that teens have been shot and killed during drug deals. The effects of it are, are concerning enough, but the level of violence that these young people are, are willing to commit on each other as a result of, these, of this drug is even... Sheriff Javier Salazar says BCSO will continue to educate the community on the dangers that come with THC vape pens. Salas customers have some questions about a fee that just started showing up on their bills this month. It's called the Uplift Assistance Program fee, and many are wondering what the fund is and where that money is going. And Hayden with Salas says City Council voted on the fee last November, and the Rates Advisory Committee asked for the charge to be broken out into a separate fee on customers' bills. The Salas Board and City Council also overhauled how its customers pay for water and sewer services. This fund goes towards helping low-income families pay their bills. It doesn't affect the bottom line of your bill at all. It's about 32 cents per thousand gallons. And so most people will see a very small amount, $1.50 or so. Hayden says customers can not opt out of the fee because it was approved by the board and council as part of SAW's new rate structure. She added it goes directly to the fund and does not pay for any SAW's salaries. Property values are up, which means you could be in for a surprise when you get mail from the Bear County Appraisal District this week. That determines how much you'll pay in property taxes. The average increase in Bear County is about 15 percent, but if you disagree with the numbers, you can't protest. In fact, the Appraisal District even encourages it. Right now on KSAT.com, we've got everything you need to know before you file your appeal. You have until May 15th to file it. We're now hearing from the police officers first on the scene of last week's school shooting in Nashville. They killed the shooter within four minutes, saving lives. As ABC's Rihanna and Ali reports, one officer says when they got there, the smell of gunpowder was in the air. This morning, one week after that deadly shooting at a Christian elementary school in Nashville, the three hero police officers who took down the shooter are describing those harrowing moments. Not knowing what I was walking into, I went through that door with purpose. Kept walking towards the gun, the sound of gunfire. Saw shell casings on the ground, uh, bullet holes on the door. Detective Sergeant Jeff Mathis, Detective Michael Colazzo, and Officer Rex Engelbert were the first three law enforcement officers through the front door of the Covenant School. Once we started hearing the first shots, that's when everything kind of kicked into overdrive for us. We had to push past the victim because uh, we continue to hear more shots being fired. All of us stepped over a victim. Um, I, to this day, don't know how I did that morally, um, but training is what kicked in. We then proceeded continually to the sounds of gunfire. The shooter had already killed three nine-year-olds and three staff members when the officers opened fire, killing the 28-year-old shooter. Some of the responding officers had never met each other before, but they formed a team and put their own lives on the line with little hesitation. They was so in tune to trying to get in 
and take this threat down that they didn't think about their own safety. I took an oath on June 4th of 2012 to serve and protect this community. My family sometimes comes second. It has to. Rihanna Nally, ABC News, New York. Former President Trump has officially pled not guilty to 34 felony charges against him. Prosecutors say Trump conspired to undermine the 2016 presidential election by trying to suppress information that could harm his candidacy. So now Trump is due back in court at the end of the year. However, his lawyers have asked that he be excused from attending that hearing in person because they have the extraordinary security required to have him show up. The Internal Revenue Service extended the tax filing deadlines to Americans affected by storms and tornadoes that hit several states last week. The regular tax filing deadline for most Americans this year is April 18th. But storm victims in parts of Mississippi and Arkansas will now have until July 31st to file individual and business tax returns. And residents and businesses in parts of California, Alabama and Georgia will have until October 16th to file their taxes. Spurs playing with at Kevin Durant and the Suns last night. San Antonio shorthanded it again. First quarter ball goes to Malachi Branham, and he dives a cutting Julian Champagne for a layup. Cut that play coming up right here. Spurs down 27-16. Suns pulling away. Devin Booker with a floater of a trio of Spurs to make it 33-18 Phoenix. They led after one. 42-25. Second quarter, Suns open a 7-0 run. Lead 49-25. Timeout San Antonio didn't help. Suns would lead by as many as 31 first half. Malachi makes the three ball with eight seconds left. In the second, Spurs trailed at the half 69-51. Continuing into the second half now, Spurs got within nine in the third. But by the end of the period, Phoenix was back ahead 97-76. San Antonio entered the night ranked last in scoring defense, having allowed just over 122 points per game, and it showed last night. Phoenix came out roaring, shooting 63% in the first quarter alone, and they kept that pace all the way to the end. Malachi Branham led the Spurs with 21 points. Trey Jones scored 20. Keita Bates, Diop, and Sandro Mamukilashvili each had 13, but it wasn't enough. Spurs fall 115-94. Up next, Spurs play Portland tomorrow up in Austin. Go Spurs go. Time now, 611 and 74 degrees for now. Facebook Messenger is introducing a special way to connect with friends and family, and it involves some old loved games. Church bells are ringing, and they're keeping one Northwest Side resident wide awake. Next, what's being done about noise coming from one home that was turned into a church. And let's look out there with live cam, prepare for the humidity this morning, and then prepare for some rain. Pack the umbrella, and we're going to check in with Justin to see when we can expect that. We'll be right back. And welcome back at 614. One Northwest side resident speaking out about a problem she says is taking a toll on her sleep and overall well-being. She's trying to address the noise coming from her next door neighbor who transformed his home into a church. Patricia Verdusco says she's lived peacefully in her home for the last 30 years, but she says the last two months have been a nightmare. It's all because of the sound of church bells coming from a speaker system that faces directly towards her home. So that's what I've been going through is like him playing the speaker Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three times a day, Monday through Friday, five times a day, Saturday and Sunday. The problem I have with him is that this sound is coming directly into my home and you know, it's waking me up every single day. According to the city of San Antonio, a church is allowed in residential areas and is subject to each district's development standards. San Antonio police measured sound pressure levels from the church bells yesterday and no violations were found. The church was notified that decibel readings will be done in the future to assure the church stays in compliance. Weather has gone downhill since we went on the air at 430 and that is starting likely to affect traffic. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Well, not just yet. Things actually are moving along just fine on TransGuy, but I did mention to Justin, we're starting to see a little bit more of those uh, lightning strikes off in the distance. So uh, just watch out as you do get the commute rolling. No major issues have been reported just yet, but we can clearly see there it's getting busier. So we can expect to see a lot more traffic. So when we see a lot more traffic, then we start to see a few more issues out there. But really, the main problem have 
have been stalled vehicles. We did have a stall, a, a stalled vehicle bus that is off of 410 at Crossroads. That's already cleared out, so better news to report there. Uh, but right now, we're going to talk about some construction until we see an issue pop up. But we want you to be prepared because something is going to take place here off of I-10 uh, over on the east side of Bear County. Bridge work, that is, tomorrow night. So plan your commute ahead of time. We tend to see a lot of congestion along I-10, and this really will take us all the way up until 5 a.m. on Friday morning. We'll see a full closure of the eastbound main lanes right there at File Road. But you can always head over to ksat.com slash traffic for a full list of closures there. But back here on Transguide, I haven't seen any issues other than stall vehicles pop up. But again, Justin, you said you also spotted some lightning off in the distance. We're mm -hmm. tracking things closely and any and when rain starts to come in, we'll of course let our viewers know. Take it easy out there. Commute's not too bad right now. That's good. good there. And we, we haven't seen a lot of severe, or we're not going to see a lot of severe weather, but there could be one or two strong storms involved this morning as the front moves through. So that's that's what we're watching on radar. We are starting to see some activity pop up here in San Antonio. So let's get right to it. And uh, we'll show you where that activity is uh, situated right now. Over Lakey, that's where the big storm is. And uh, we're seeing a lot of lightning strikes and some heavy rain associated there. So this is a broken line. Uh, this is not going to create rain for everybody, but as it moves south and east, we've got to keep a close eye on it. We've also noticed some activity starting to pop up here in San Antonio. So let me zoom in a little bit closer and show you where uh, right now, right out along Bandera and 410 is where we noticed uh, sort of a heavier downpour here and we are getting some lightning strikes. I'm going to pause the radar for you and one or two lightning strikes involved here. So Jefferson High School up to just south of the medical center. We are noticing a good swath of rain here and uh, this is going to create uh, maybe some uh, quick heavy rain if you're traveling in these areas and then it will move off to the uh, north and east. So this will work its way up towards uh, Castle Hills and eventually Churchill High School. And there we just got an update. So uh, it has moved now to I-10 and 410 and is working its way uh, towards the Castle Hills area, as I mentioned, right over that interchange there at 410 and I-10. And that's, uh, again, going to cause some brief heavy rain if you're uh, commuting north up I-10. Let me go ahead and uh, put a little bit of a track on this. Again, this is not a severe storm or anything like this, uh, but we are looking at uh, uh, some good heavy rain here. So Olmos Park about 651. Uh, Castle Hills about 630. So that's what you can expect with uh, this particular cell that is uh, working its way through San Antonio right now. Uh, we've got a couple more behind it. Uh, and uh, these are relatively small. The main line, the broken line, is still uh, back up in the hill country. And I mentioned this storm around Lakey. This one looks pretty healthy. Where you see some of those black colors, uh, that's where we could be looking at uh, potentially a little bit of uh, hail involved here. So let's look at the threats and uh, we can see where the purple color is. That's where we could have up to one inch hail. This is not a severe storm, but there could be some hail around Lost Maples and Vanderpool. Uh, that is one other storm that we'll be keeping a close uh, eye on. Uh, we'll put it back into motion here and I'll zoom out. And you'll see that yes, we do have a broken line. The question will be, does this hold together all the way to San Antonio? I think it's possible if it makes it here around uh, if it does make it here, it'll be around 7 or 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, there's a look at the forecast, and you see around 7 o'clock. It may have weakened a little bit by the time it gets here, uh, but it does look like we may have some rain. 30% chance, and then that quickly falls off behind the front, and we're looking at partly to mostly cloudy skies this afternoon. Temperatures uh, will be in the 70s this morning, but falling off into the 60s behind the front. Uh, for a time this morning, and then we bump back up into the upper 70s by 5, 6 o'clock. So a cooler day than yesterday will also be very windy behind the front gusts to 35 out of the north and east, and that creates a bit of a fire threat, uh, just something to keep in mind, especially out west of San Antonio. 74 right now, we are reporting a shower or storm there around the airport. And then as we get into tonight, showers and storms will gather along the coast, 40% chance by 4 a.m. tomorrow morning, and then look what happens tomorrow widespread rain. By the time we get into the afternoon, an 80% chance of showers and storms. There could be some pockets of heavy rain involved here uh, into the afternoon, and this continues right on into Friday. So a couple days here where we're going to likely pick up some good rainfall totals, and you see the, the future radar here at 7 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, showers and pockets of rain. It won't rain all day, but intermittent rain uh, certainly a possibility. Rainfall potential 1 to 2 inches here in San Antonio. Bigger totals east, lower totals west. And as we look at the extended forecast, rain tomorrow and Friday. And we also need to emphasize it is going to be chilly. 58 Thursday, 58 Friday. It does clear out for the weekend. 70 on Saturday, 78 for Easter Sunday and partly cloudy.
glad for the break in the heat, but we'll have to be careful with those storms coming in. Yeah, and we'll, we'll be here uh, while we'll be on the case that weather app if we need to break in there to let you know uh, how things are evolving. And remember that weather authority app. It's cool. You can zoom in almost right down to you, the street in your neighborhood. That's true. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. 621, 74 degrees on your Wednesday morning. If you have a Samsung Galaxy Watch in a Peloton, you might want to listen up. They just announced a new feature. We're going to tell you what it is next. Struggling with the highs and lows of Bipolar 1? Ask about Braylar. Because you are greater than your Bipolar 1. And you can help take control of your symptoms with Braylar. Some medicines only treat the lows or highs. Braylar treats depressive, acute manic, and mixed episodes of Bipolar 1 in adults. Proven full-spectrum relief for all Bipolar 1 symptoms. And in Braylar clinical studies, most saw no substantial impact on weight. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke. Call your doctor about unusual changes in behavior or suicidal thoughts. Antidepressants can increase these in children and young adults. Report fever, stiff muscles, or confusion, which may mean a life-threatening reaction, or uncontrollable muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death, weight gain, and high cholesterol may occur. Movement dysfunction and restlessness are common side effects. Sleepiness and stomach issues are also common. Side effects may not appear for several weeks. Ask about Raylar and learn how AbV could help you save. In this morning's GMA First Look, from startup CEO to accused of committing a $175 million fraud. Getting financial aid might seem really, really complicated, but at Frank, we've really simplified it for you. Charlie Javis was a rising star in the financial world, appearing in Forbes 30 Under 30 list in 2019, and founder of the company Frank, a company that promised prospective students a simpler way to sign up for financial aid, but authorities say Javis faked data and repeatedly misrepresented numbers, touting that the company had 4.25 million users who signed up for an account Count, but the real number, according to prosecutors, less than 300,000. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on the allegations and what Charlie Javis is saying this morning. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. And attention all Galaxy Watch users, you are now able to connect to a Peloton bike and monitor your heart rate. You can do this by downloading the Peloton Watch app. Once connected, you can see your heart rate on the screen during a workout. Facebook announced it's adding multiplayer games into the video, video call feature within Messenger. It'll allow you to talk to your family and friends while also playing video games with each other. The video call gaming feature is available on Messenger for iOS, Android, and the web. And there are 14 games being showcased, including Words with Friends, Card Wars, and Exploding Kittens. Time now, 626 and 74 degrees for now. State Senator Roland Gutierrez introducing 21 pieces of legislation in honor of the 21 victims from the Robb Elementary School shooting. After the break, we'll talk about what those proposals include and what one of his victims, uh, victim, the victim's dad, had to say. And let's look out there with Transkai looking over at I-37 to Hot Wells where things are moving and also I-35 and Nogalitos. However, we will be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos very soon. Police say they were firing guns and throwing fists. As many as five people now in custody. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why these were no easy arrests for police coming up. Outside with live cam, we've had some showers here in town, but you may be seeing flashes of lightning to the west right now. A line of showers and storms is intensifying quickly. And we'll talk to Justin in just a sec. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, April 5th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, prepare for that rain. Let's go ahead and check in with Justin. I know you said that we're going to get this for a couple of days. Yes, yeah, so today it's a small window. It's just this morning as the front comes through. But tomorrow and Friday, some widespread showers and storms. So, uh, yes, we're going to have a couple of days here with some chances. And I want to show you what's going on right now with the live radar. We've got a broken line of showers and storms here across the Hill Country. The biggest storms are up here in the Hill Country parts of Bandera County working towards Kerrville. If you're in Kerrville, expect some lightning and thunder. These are not severe, but good heavy rain and you're going to hear it. It's going to be fairly loud. We've also noticed a few showers and even a few thunderstorms work through the city of San Antonio. Again, not severe, but these will dump some brief heavy rain. And these two cells that worked through a little bit earlier have already weakened. So now we're looking at just some showers there on the uh, northeast side. 
uh, moving up towards 1604 and then uh, another little shower there around SeaWorld. We could see a bit more through the morning. We're watching this line that is back up again across the hill country. And there's that heavy storm I was talking about near Kerrville with uh, quite a bit of electricity involved. We'll see if this line does indeed hold together all the way to San Antonio. It's possible. Uh, if it does, it'll be here around 7, 8 o'clock this morning and uh, could cause some wet roads. Stephen, of course, will be monitoring that as well. Right now, 74. There is uh, some rain being reported at the airport, 2.7. In case that 12 hour forecast, we we'll have some pretty good rain chances in there 7 to 8 o'clock and then start to taper them off there after the front moves through. We get some cooler weather today. Sun probably pops out this afternoon, but we've got gusty winds too. winds out of the northeast, uh, potentially gusting up to 35 miles per hour. Highest today only in the 70s, upper 70s. It'll feel nice. Things change again tonight. Showers and storms start to work their way back in and tomorrow will be a wet day. More details on that in just a bit. We'll go over to Stephen now and uh, check in for the latest on the morning commute. Yeah, Justin, check out 410 at Crossroads. Uh, looks like the roads may be a little bit damp out there or wet from what we're seeing. And uh, in fact, as you get the commute rolling, you're seeing a lot more folks out there as well. Take it easy, guys. Uh, we are at the start of morning rush, so we're really going to start to see a lot more activity out there. Want you to get to your destination on time and safely. But we are going to be watching the roads closely. And of course, Justin will be uh, providing those weather updates as needed. But let's get you to our map right now. You're starting to see a little bit more congestion in the usual hot spots along US 90 eastbound as well as 35 southbound. But we are going to have to take a look at some of those stalls also that are being reported. Also, road debris detected right here along 281 southbound at Hildebrand Avenue. Also, uh, just be on the lookout for that. It doesn't appear to be causing any issues for drivers in that area. But again, just well, something we'll watch closely. But do want to mention some stalls that have been reported. Uh, this one here, US 90 eastbound at Military Drive. Just watch out if you're traveling those eastbound lanes from Castroville. You may see some flashing lights. Hopefully, it'll be a, a TxDOT Hero Truck helping that driver out. But we are going to be watching the roads closely. And again, I'll be talking to Justin about what we can expect weather rise, what weather rise that is. But uh, thankfully, no major issues are being reported at the this hour. Just remember to drive slave and slow down anytime before you approach any curves. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Now to some late breaking news of fire on the city's east side. This is over on East Carson, just north of I-35. Sarah Costa is live at the scene. Sarah, what can you tell us? Good morning, Mark and Steph. Yeah, when we got here, we could see flames just shooting through all parts of this house on East Carson. This is right across the street from Fort Sam Houston. And right now you can see that fire crews are just kind of going inside the house, putting out those hot spots, definitely in the mop up stage now. But just maybe five, 10 minutes ago, we could barely see my photographer and I each other's faces because the smoke was so thick earlier. Like I said, when we arrived, flames were shooting out from the house uh, through the roof. I did talk to a police officer on scene. He did tell me that there is a family inside this home. They were able to get out safely and the firefighters did arrive pretty quickly on scene. I mean, station number five is uh, just maybe a couple of streets over. We are in the Government Hill area. This is just uh, near 35 in Carson, near Frank Street, also right across from Fort Sam. Uh, CPS Energy is here on scene. They are uh, turning off those power lines because at one point, uh, police told us they wanted to move us back out of fear that that fire was arching over the power lines and was going to catch on some of those lines. CPS Energy is here. Did They, they did turn off the electricity for the house and part of these power lines to make sure it was safe. Firefighters were able to fight this from the outside and now you see that they're inside just with their flashlight looking for those hot spots. Uh, when we got here, it was a very aggressive fire within about 10 minutes. So firefighters got it under control and that we do know everyone is safe. We are still waiting to hear from the battalion chief exactly what happened this fire. The police did tell me they know that the fire did start at the back of the home. But once we get updated from the San Antonio Fire Department, we will bring you those updates live on air and online. Live from the east side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. What may have started with a gun battle ended with a fist fight, then arrests all taking place along a north side highway. Took officers from four different agencies to bring that situation under control. Katrina Weber is live near Highway 281 just north of Bitters Road with that story. Katrina, how did this all start? Well, that's something that Hollywood Park police are still trying to figure out. Now, what they got involved 
They say they had reports of people shooting at each other from separate cars. But soon after they stopped one car, they had a whole different situation on their hands. a bit of a brawl with some of the suspects fighting each other and officers. Hollywood Park had to call for backup and officers from Hill Country Village, San Antonio and Bear County all showed up. Police say shortly before one this morning they had stopped that car near Highway 281, which they suspected was involved in a rolling gun battle. They had reports of people in separate cars shooting at each other. But for some reason, people in the car that they stopped began throwing fists. Police ultimately took as many as five people into custody. And we don't know yet what charges, if any, they will face or who will face charges. Uh, as far as we know, no one was hurt in the gun battle or in the fist fight that ensued afterward. Reporting live on the North Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Former President Donald Trump spoke last night about yesterday's events from his home in Florida. He pleaded not guilty to 34 felony charges. Our sister station WKMG's Troy Campbell has more from Mar-a-Lago about his remarks and what could come next. As it turns out, virtually everybody that has looked at this case, including rhinos and even hardcore Democrats, Say there is no crime. Back home inside Mar-a-Lago, former President Donald Trump speaking about his surrender to law enforcement in New York and pleading not guilty to 34 felony counts. They can't beat us at the ballot box, so they try and beat us through the law. The former president tied his prosecution and the multiple investigations he faces to false claims of a rigged 2020 election. Tuesday morning, Trump boarded his private plane in Palm Beach County and headed to New York. Crowds gathered outside of Trump Tower as the 45th president of the United States walked out of the building and into a motorcade, headed to a New York courtroom. This picture showing a former United States president for the first time as a criminal defendant inside of a courtroom. New York Under District New York Attorney law, Elvin Bragg felony? saying the 34 False count violence. indictment is tied to hush payments made to several people ahead of the 2016 election. After the arraignment, Trump posted on a social media website he was back in the air and headed home to Florida. Palm Beach County deputies closing off the roadway into Palm Beach as hundreds of his supporters lined the roads. We heard about the welcome home rally, so we figured we'd come down and show the president our support and just let him know that a lot of New Yorkers don't think he should have been indicted. Trump isn't due back in court until December. His attorneys did ask the judge to excuse Trump from attending in person, citing both extradition and security concerns. Outside Mar-a-Lago, Troy Campbell, KSAT 12 News. Since the start of the 2023 legislative session, State Senator Roland Gutierrez and other state lawmakers have introduced 21 pieces of legislation in honor of the 21 victims of the Robb Elementary School shooting in Uvalde. Nearly every week, Gutierrez has been joined by victims' families of mass shootings from across our state. In this session, Gutierrez and his fellow lawmakers have proposed things like stricter background checks, raising the age to purchase semi-automatic weapons, and databases for ammo purchases. This needs to stop. You know, too many kids are dying. And this is not, you know, it's a simple request for the age from the age to go up from 18 to 21. Um, if that was in place during, you know, last year, if this were to happen, at this point, the 18 bills introduced by Gutierrez's office have been referred to the State Affairs, Criminal Justice, and Education Committees. Time now, 640 and 74 degrees for now. Is your doctor gaslighting you after the break? The ignored and missed signs of a health problem that impacts half the people on Earth. Christy Nalder has found her game and so much more. Ultimately, I think it's the community. I think it's the community and the friends that I've met and ladies that are going through the same thing that I'm going through. Like so many middle-aged women, the 47-year-old was hit hard by hot flashes, sleeping problems, heart palpitations, and low energy. Doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor told her nothing, absolutely nothing was wrong. They chalk it up to poor diet, lack of exercise, depression. Um, you just need to sleep better. My primary care, he kept trying to give me sleeping pills. 
Perimenopause and menopause, in my opinion, really can cause women to feel devalued and ashamed. Dr. Camille Moreno heads up a menopausal women's program at the University of Utah. She says it's common for women to be dismissed by their health care providers. A survey by the North American Menopause Society found that 45% of women reported that their health care provider did not take their menopause symptoms seriously. The increased risk for a menopausal woman to have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, since estrogen does have protective effects at the level of the heart. Your lifestyle could also impact the severity. Smokers tend to hit menopause two years earlier. Your race even plays a role. Women of color tend to have more bothersome and more severe quality of life symptoms, and they suffer the longest. And Dr. Moreno tells her patients to be wary of the very popular bioidentical hormone pellet therapy. It's not approved by the FDA and can expose women to testosterone levels higher than a man's. And she emphasizes to search for a doctor who will work with your specific needs. They don't have to go through this by themselves. Christy was first prescribed an estrogen patch. It was too much, but by cutting it down to a quarter of a patch, she's hitting her stride. And this is something that 100% of us are gonna go through and none of us have the support that we need. I'm Leslie Hudson reporting. Time check 646. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. I see flashing lights over there off of 151. Yes, I uh, just saw these as well on TransGuide. You want to make sure you watch out because really the big issue on in terms of the roads right now seems to be stall vehicles. Uh, State Highway 151 nonetheless, you're seeing a lot of traffic, but it's likely in the eastbound lanes as folks are making their way to work probably this early in the morning. And it does look like those flashing lights uh, may have been something very minor, uh, probably a traffic stop. So just remember, follow the speed limit, take it slow out on the road and keep your focus out there uh, because stalls are starting to be the trending issue as we see one here at Loop 410 northbound at US 90. This one's not causing any issues, but not too far from there. We do have another one still reported at US 90 eastbound at Military Drive. Again, not causing any problems, uh, but it does seem to be the big uh, trending issue, at least at this hour. Also keeping a close eye over here on 281 southbound uh, where we do have some road debris detected near Hildebrand Avenue. That's not also causing any issues in terms of congestion or slowdowns but just watch out as things start getting moving starts. People are starting to get moving this morning. Taking a look at the metropolitan area. You just see a little bit more of that congestion. We are at uh, the really the start of morning rush, so we'll likely see a little bit more of that as the commute does pick up here. But let's go ahead and get it back on rotation from our trans guide cameras. Uh, there you can see 90 at 35. Uh, not a bad shot, but I'm trying to keep a very close eye on some of these roadways. I know we saw what appeared to be wet roads on 410 near crossroads, so uh, just take it slow out there. We're going to be tracking things, of course, throughout Good Morning America as well. I got a message from one of our viewers in Kerrville about 10 minutes ago, and she said it is pouring up uh, there. Already. There's a strong storm right over the city of Kerrville, and we've got a lot of lightning, very heavy rain. It's not severe at the moment, but I would not be surprised if we got some hail out of this, too, in the city of Kerrville, not in San Antonio. Uh, right now, we've just got a few showers here in town, but I do want to take you up to the storm. So you see the uh, white lines there. Those represent all the lightning strikes, and there's a ton of them right now with this storm. Let's zoom in uh, to the city there and where you see some of those purple colors that represents some very, very heavy rain. And that is moving right into the heart of the city, right along 173 there into the city of Kerrville. We'll go ahead and pause it. And uh, right there is where we could see some uh, s small hail involved. In fact, we can switch this over and uh, take a look at some of the threats involved with this storm. And where you see that purple color, that uh, represents some hail right now, a half inch hail. So that would be sub severe. But if this storm intensifies just a little bit more, the hail could could get a little bit larger. So far, we haven't seen that. So that's good news there. Uh, we'll switch it back to the radar and uh, you can see where uh, the rain is heaviest. And it's right now it's just just south of the city, uh, but this will continue to uh, move into Kerrville with a ton of lightning, as we said. So that's a long a boundary and we've seen a broken line of showers and storms with this boundary. Now the next question becomes uh, does this line hold together as it moves towards San Antonio and that's still a question because I think it weakens some uh, and these cells by the way are moving northeast but the front itself is pushing south and east and uh, we'll see if that front generates any more showers or storms. We have seen a few here around San Antonio and in fact we've seen a few lightning strikes with a little bit more activity uh, developing just to the south and west there near, near Divine and some of that will work in the next couple of hours. We'll be here for you if it 
the showers and storms do develop will be on the KSAT weather app and we'll bring you updates uh, if it's necessary. Uh, here's a look at the forecast and this particular model does show showers and maybe a couple thunderstorms broken line working through around 7, 8 o'clock and then starting to push south and east by 9 o'clock. We'll see partly to mostly cloudy skies rest of the day with some gusty winds. Here's a look at the KSAT 12 hour forecast. There's that chance of rain this morning and then the rain chances fall off. 70 at noontime and behind the front, by the way, it'll be cooler. We've got gusty winds too. high temperatures only around 78 today. That's a that's a great change. And then the look at the wind gust forecast. We'll see gusts up to 35 miles per hour this morning out of the northeast behind that front. And it's pretty much windy all day right now. 74, a little bit of rain at the airport. And as we look at the longer term forecast here, showers and storms begin to gather along the coastal counties tomorrow morning and then that rain moves in in tomorrow widespread showers and storms with some pockets of heavy rain. 80% chance of rain on your Thursday. That's at 4 o'clock tomorrow. And this continues right on into Friday as well. Uh, rainfall potential 1 to 2 inches here in San Antonio. Bigger totals east, lower totals west. But we're hopeful that we'll get some good soaking rain in spots. Uh, you see the good rain chances Thursday, Friday, 70 Saturday. And by Sunday, we're clearing out 78 and warm to start next week. So it's just a couple days here and keep in mind it will be chilly too. Highs only in the upper 50s on Thursday and Friday. Very chilly. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. yep. 651, 73 degrees. It's a story about helping those in need coming up tomorrow on GMSA. We're going to tell you about one woman's journey to help underserved children around the world, what inspired her and what she's doing to help. Outside with live cam, another look at traffic and weather coming up. But don't forget Texas Lotto tonight. The jackpot up to $62.75 million. Okay, just about five till seven. Go ahead and take one last look at traffic with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. You know, we were really trying to get a look at 10 at uh, Comfort West, but unfortunately, the camera just went out. A lot of what Justin was talking about was being picked up from the Trans Guide camera. Plenty of lightning strikes, and there it is. Unfortunately, we're not able to give you a live look at that at the moment, so we'll talk to our friends at Trans Guide, but notice that there's plenty of droplets out there as well. Take it easy. The commute is getting busier, so we're going to have to watch things very closely here in town. Thankfully, 10 West at Loop 410 is not an area of concern, but you're starting to see a lot more activity out there, so we're going to see a little bit more congestion. Uh, thankfully, some resol resolution here at Loop 410 northbound at US 90. A stall vehicle has cleared out, and we are still watching a stall vehicle at US 90 eastbound at Military Drive, along with road debris detected at 281 southbound at Hildebrand Avenue. But other than that, uh, the commute does look like it's moving along just fine. But as we mentioned, actually, before we toss to Justin, I think we do have a shot there at 10 at Kerrville East, an area we're going to have to watch closely. There is some of that lightning, guys. Yeah, it's it's very electrical up around Kerrville. We're still watching that storm that is right over the city of Kerrville. Now here in San Antonio, it's just passing showers and it's not a severe storm, but it is going to put down some small hail, potentially very electrical and some uh, minor street flooding as possible there in Kerrville as this cell moves off to the north and east. That's along a boundary that'll continue to push towards, towards San Antonio, which could produce a few more showers and storms this morning before gusty winds kick in. And of course, we're going to be watching for some heavy rain showing up tomorrow and Friday with cooler temperatures. And these guys will have live updates yep. throughout Good Morning America. See you at nine.